I'm a bit ashamed to be called a transformation expert. Why? Because to me, an expert is the people which can answer most of the questions in that field. To me, if this day you come to me, you definitely have a few choices, but a lot of answers like it depends. It depends. Followed by a bunch of questions and questions for you to go back and find out. Lots of people go back, find out answers, experiment on it. Some people succeed and forget about me. But most people, in fact, over 80%. Give up. So I like to reframe my jobs as a transformation give up expert. I think that would be better. For years, I have a, I've been blessed and privileged to help a number of companies, ranging from enterprises to startup. Everywhere I turn, every day I go to work, I'm seeing smart, hardworking, ambitious professionals taking responsibilities. The same people that taking responsibilities also avoiding responsibilities. This has been a burning desire for me for many years. On why the same person. Is taking so much responsibility in one area in life, but just trying to avoid at all costs in a different area of life. So today, I'd like to invite you to explore the mindset. In fact, this mindset—I'm not the one who invented it. It is small research in the University of Texas by Dr. Christopher Avery. It is a study that has been done for over 29 years on how our minds work to change from a certain stage to a different stage. Have you ever want to change something that's so passionate about, but fine, but somehow you realize that for you to change those things, you need somebody else to do it. Or somebody else need to change, or something must change. Whether it's the government, it's the countries, it's the educations, or even the enterprise. Before I go into that things, let's define the context of problem, because we wouldn't need to take responsibility if there is no problem. Okay, there is no problem. Why take actions? So the problem in my Context is the things that come between this what you want and what you have. It's reciprocal. I'm sure you have your brain to read it. So what you want and what you have are two different things. In that instance, slides of moment when you have problems, there is this microsecond in your brain that works itself. Like a human being, so every one of us the same. Before I get bored, before I bore you with the theory, I want to walk through this research and study by telling a little story. A few years ago, before I actually left the enterprise, being corporate warrior, becoming uh, an entrepreneur, I used to work for a global company. I worked for New York teams while I was staying in Bangkok. I recall in November that year, it was very late, so I need to work in the shift where I need to support the time zone of New York City. So which means that I probably finished the work around midnight. It was very late. I was tired. I was in the software industry, so everybody knows the software industry. They have special force where they don't have to sleep. So I finished the job at midnight. 
I drove home with my cars tired. Arrived home, and I tried to get in the house through the front door. I couldn't get in because it's too late. I didn't tell my wife that I would be late, so she locked the door. So, what can I do? So I walk back to the back door of the house, find my way in. I'm not going to tell you how, how I get in. I got in, and I put my car key in the kitchen, where the back door is. In the morning, I have to wake up and rush to the office, you know, to finish the job that I left last night. And I finish everything and run to the front door and try to get my keys. Guess, did I find my key? No. Guess what's the first reaction or the first words that I say to my wife and shout back to the kitchen? Who took my key? I saw a lot of you answering those questions. Are you at my home? No, because that instant, the things that happen in our blame is, you know, blame someone else. It's so fast. Who took my key? And my wife, who is smart and beautiful, shout back from the kitchen. <laughs> Who's the last driver? How smart she is. So actually, she saw the key in the kitchen. She, is, she was in the kitchen. So I said, oh. So I walked back to the kitchen. I found my key. Guess what is the next episode of my sentence? I was tired. It was raining. The door was locked. I found excuses to get myself in the righteousness, to be right. I have to put the car key here. I have no choice. It's a situation where I have no choice at all. Familiar? It's the weather, it's the economy, it's the government, it's the way it is. Trying to find an excuse to get you into positions where you are being right. So I'm not wrong. So next. This is not the first time that I forgot my car key. So. I graduated to the next stage when I drove the car back to the office that, oh, I'm a dumber. I'm so forgetful. I will never be able to fix my forgetfulness. That is shame. In fact, if you look carefully, those are the three states of blame in our brain. And this is very natural. The first is blame on the people. The second is blame to the things the way they are. And the blame that is very unlucky in our society is teaching us that it's the right thing to do, is feeling guilty by blaming yourself. How often that we see our kids doing something wrong, and if he or she is like, oh, I know I'm wrong now, and you say, good boy, good girl. That is how society is teaching us. The story not end there because in a lot of organizations or government or educations, we often get into an obligations. So what is obligations? Have you ever won? Have you ever go to the talk that you really don't want to go, but you have to go? Hopefully not this one. <laughs> yes, that is the state that we've been taught about accountabilities. You know, I used to be a project manager shortly, that I always say, you know what? I really don't want to do this. That is my job. I have to do. I really don't want to do it. Have you 
ever fall into that state? You know, those are states of obligations. Where? What about quit? The quitting is a very small stage where you have a lot of shames and a, a lot of obligations, and you feel like, I just want to check out, you know, give up. For example, as I mentioned, going to the talk that you don't want to go, hopefully not this one. If you don't like it, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Your cell phone is your friends, right? You're coming up, playing games. It's like being physically stay, but mentally away. That is called quitting, check out. Is that a good state for the company or any entity? No. I think the, the way that we should respond all we can respond is the stage where we call a true responsibilities. What is this stage? This state is the state where you have true power, freedom, and choice. The thing is, these are just a tools. And I just want to mention it very importantly. This is a very poor management tools. Don't use it to point to other people. Because if you're doing that, what are you doing? I'm responsibility, you are not. What are you doing? You're just blaming, right? This is a personal tools for yourself. And it's nothing wrong to be in the state of blame, justify, shame, obligations. It's human being, you know. It's very human being. But the thing is, being a human being is aware of where the state you are and try to graduate yourself up, up, and tr have a chance to move up to the state of responsibilities mindset. So I give you some models. Now, so how can I practice it? I have a little tools, which you may have in your hands. There are two sides. Going back to the last slide, the thing which is below the line, you see there the line between the blue and the red. Down here we call below the line. Up there we call above the line. The things that I invite you to play for a week or two is if you understand the model quickly and try to observe yourself. If you happen to start blaming other people, giving you, you one mark, one mark, one mark. If somehow you catch yourself in your minds and catch it, now I can take responsibility. I'm not in the obligations. I move up to the responsibilities. Give yourself one mark on the catch it, which means catch it, you have a chance to be responsibility process. If you notice, I give score to both of them. Even get out, if it gets out below the line, you actually get a score, you get one. And you catch yourself, actually you multiply by 10. Why I still give the score? Because I want to give you an experience that being human is knowing that you are below the line. And that's all it takes. So, that is idea worth spreading. So take away for this model, besides the state of mind, below the line, above the line. I want to understand that I want you to respect your humanness and others, because everybody is the same. It's a natural state that we are in. The second one is practice this to teach and observe yourself. Last but not least, go back to the first principle. 
which I didn't say much about first principle, is what? There's a text in the middle. The first principle is, for things to change, who must change? I must change. Thank you.